Hi guys, I'm Sandra and in this video we will assemble and test the TiVo Up Hydra. So if you want to know all the details, then stay tuned. Hi guys, welcome back. My name is Rui and this is the Rui Raptor YouTube channel. If you want to help us out, you can by giving this video a like and subscribe to the channel. You can also help by joining our Patreon page or by clicking on any of the affiliate links posted below in the video description. In our previous video, we unboxed and checked the main features of the Hydra, the new 3D printer with laser engraving from TiVo Up. Today, we will assemble this machine and get it ready for the first power on. And at the end of the video, you can also see our first tests. So, let's start with the assembly. And the first step is to install the top half on the base. To do that, you first need to locate the two slots on the base where the vertical profiles will be sitting on. Move the heat bed all the way to the front and then place the top half on the base. Be very careful with the two Z-stepper driver wires and also the flat cable on the left vertical profile. To secure the vertical profiles to the base, we need to use the four long screws. The screws need to be inserted from underneath, so carefully tilt the printer and tighten two of the screws on one of the sides. Do the same for the other side. When that is done, make sure the top half is squared with the base. And then measure the distance between the vertical profiles at the top and at the bottom. If the distance is not the same, loosen the long screws and adjust the vertical profiles. Unlike the previous printers from this manufacturer, the Hydra includes a spool holder. To assemble it, we need the two plates and the bag that contains the screws, bearings and so on. One of the plates came with threaded pins, while the other did not. For that plate, with the threaded pins, first we place the spacer, then the bearing, and finally the lock nut. Do the same for the other side. For the plate without the threaded pins, first we place the screw, then the spacer, bearing, and lock nut. Repeat the process for the other side. At the end use the wrench to turn the lock nuts but don't fully tighten them. The smaller screws and T-nuts are installed this way and they are used to secure the spool holder to the printer. It is installed from the back side of the printer and the T-nuts must be aligned with the profile slots. When tightening, make sure that the T-nuts rotate 90 degrees. The distance between the plates will vary according to the size of the spools that you will use. For the filament sensor installation, there are bad news and good news. We received the sensor not pre-installed, which means that we had to pass the cable all the way down and behind the Z-carriage. However, the bad news is that it's not easy to pass the connector behind the carriage. So we had to very carefully remove each pin, pass the cable and then install back the wires in the connector. These plastic strips came included and are used to hold and hide the wires from the filament sensor. The good news is that probably you will not have to do all this because we were informed that the sensor will come pre-installed from factory from now on. Now for the connections. From the back side connect both Z stepper motors. Next is the X axis stepper motor. At the front is the flat cable. On the bottom side connector, just push the flat cable in. Do this carefully and make sure the flat cable is correctly inserted. Next to it is the filament sensor. On the top side connector, K 
carefully raise the small lock. Then insert the flat cable, make sure it's correctly inserted, and then carefully push the lock down. Before we can install the head, we first need to raise the Z a little bit. To do that, turn the couplers a few times. To install the print head, we first need to identify the side with the electrical pads. This is the side that will attach to the X-axis carriage. As you can see, both parts were designed to fit to each other. Having said that, align the head with the carriage and carefully slide it all the way down. To secure the head, there is an M5 by 15 screw that is tightened from the back side of the carriage. For the laser head, the procedure is the same. Just make sure you have the printer turned off when removing or installing any of the heads. And the printer is now assembled. And this is how the printer looks like assembled. The print volume is 305 by 305 by 400 millimeters. Before turning the printer on, there are a few checks and adjustments that need to be made. First are the belts. For the X-axis, you need to loosen the two screws located under the idler mount to adjust. For the Y-axis, is done from the bottom side of the printer. The adjustment is done by loosening the four screws that secure the Y-axis stepper motor mount. Next is the wheel's grip. On each carriage, there are eccentric nuts that you need to turn to adjust. On the Y-axis carriage, there are three located on the right wheels. Use the wrench tool to turn and adjust. For the X-axis carriage, the eccentric nut is located on the bottom wheel. A correct adjustment is important because if they get too tight, it will make the wheels deform and start to wear fast, and too loose will make the carriage wobble. As for the Z carriages, the eccentric nuts are located on the inner wheels. We made a detailed video that explains exactly how to adjust the eccentric nuts, so please check the video description for the link. Now we can connect the power cord and turn on the printer. At first, the menus look very simple, but they include lots of options. In Tool and in Preheat, it's possible to heat up the hot end and the bed automatically for PLA or ABS. It's also possible to increase or decrease the temperature by steps. In Extrusion, it's possible to push or pull filament. In Move, we can move the X, Y or Z axis. In Home, we can home all the axes or each individually. It's also possible to disable all the stepper motors or just the X and Y axis. In Auto Level, the printer runs an Auto Level sequence. And in there, it's possible to adjust the Z offset. After the alignment, it's possible to adjust the Z offset. In filament, we can load or unload filament. In settings and in EEPROM set, it's possible to load the factory default values and store the values to the EEPROM. In fan, we can control the layer cooling fan. In the about, we have the information of the board and firmware installed on the printer. And UI switching is where we switch between 3D printing and laser engraving. In config, we have several parameters. In machine settings, we have the acceleration and speed settings. In motor settings, we have the steps, homing sensitivity, driver curing settings, and driver step mode. 
In leveling settings, we have the leveling coordinates, the auto leveling commands, the probe offsets, and the BL Touch Z offset menu. And in advanced settings, we have the pause position settings, filament load and unload settings, and Wi Fi settings. In language, it's possible to change the language of the menus. And finally, in Wi-Fi we have some information about the Wi-Fi connection. To start a print and inside the print menu, we first need to select where we want to load the file from, micro SD or USB drive. While printing, it's possible to access some options as well. One of them is the baby steps to make fine adjustments to the Z. With the laser selected and in tool, we can home the axis, position the head, move the axis, turn the laser on and off, and adjust the laser power. In settings, we have the same options as with the print head. To load the filament, place the spool on the spool holder, pass the filament through the sensor, and then, while pushing the extruder lever back, insert the filament all the way in. The filament is inserted directly in the pneumatic fitting on the extruder. It would be better if the manufacturer had included a small PTFE tube for the filament entry. For the first tests, we printed the traditional Benchy. And this is how it turned out. We are still working on the slicer profile, but so far it looks okay. We also tested the laser heads. For the laser head, we first need to have the laser in focus. Both lasers are fixed focus models. So to do that, place the material on the bed, remove the shield, and turn the laser on by selecting the lowest value for the laser output power. Next, raise or lower the Z until you get the smallest and brightest focus dot. Turn the laser off, place back the shield, and it's ready to work. Don't forget to wear the safety goggles every time you work with the laser. This is very important. Don't miss our follow-up video where we'll show all the test prints and also give our full review. And that's it you guys, hope you liked the video, we will see you guys next time. Bye!